Good afternoon to all. Welcome to the Talks Tent at C Focus 2020, where we will kick off the C Spotlight series with our first talk of the day, Local Infrastructures, Global Ecologies. Before I hand the time over to the panel, please allow me to introduce you to our speakers for today. First on our left, we have Ade Damawan, an artist, curator, and director of Rang Rupa, who will be co-curating the upcoming Documenta 15 in 2022. And next to him, we have Vietnamese-American artist Dean Cule, whose works document social and cultural narratives through examining and unearthing warfare and history. On his right is Rikrit Tiravanija, a pioneering artist in relational aesthetics who combines traditional object making, performances, teaching, and other forms of public service and social actions. Rikrit's works are also currently on view in, um, the, in 10A. And finally, on the right, we, we have our panel moderator, uh, Kathleen Ditzik, who is a Singaporean researcher and curator. She's currently pursuing her PhD at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, and her writings have been published in three different languages and on various prominent platforms, both locally and internationally. So please join me in welcoming our panelists for today. So good afternoon. Um, welcome to Local Infrastructures, Global Ecologies. So this is a panel that examines the way in which the global ecology of the art world is informed by the development of local infrastructure in specific art scenes and vice versa. Um, we're going to bring uh, begin today actually with a series of questions for our three speakers. We have Ade, Ding and Rikrit. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, with a series of questions that will help us to unpack their specific perspectives um, and specifically as artists who have produced international and regional platforms that display art as well as contribute to them. Furthermore, they have cultivated local organizations that contribute to local, regional, and global art ecologies over the last 20 to 30 years, a period marked by globalization and growth of many of the different art scenes within Southeast Asia. Um, finally, we'll probably end with a quick question on actually what the future of art production, circulation, and display both in Singapore and the international contemporary art world will look like in the face of recent, um, our recent past, which has been marked by tendencies towards deglobalization, new international alignments with the rise of China, and the economic growth of Southeast Asia and its different nations. So to start us off with a very broad question and to sort of introduce your different um, projects, could you tell us a little bit about how you actually see this relationship between the global and the local? Because obviously, these two terms are terms that change based on where, um, change in their meanings based on where you stand and, and who you're speaking to. Um, so perhaps if we could start with Ding, if you could talk a little bit about your ideas about how the global and local interact or are dependent on each other through San Art and the last 13 years in which it has developed alongside the Vietnamese art scene. Um, okay. <laughs> Brett, big question, yes. Big. Um, okay, San Art started really by funding from the international, from the outside. And that's how we were able to came into being. Uh, I set up a nonprofit organization in LA with uh, major collectors that are on museum boards in New York and in LA. And they collected my work, but also they funded the foundations to um, to support projects in Vietnam. But not only with just individual funders, but with big foundations, their interest changes. They move. Uh, one year is one country, and the next year it's someplace out. Uh, Vietnam economically is doing really well, and so we're alone, no longer the foster child of the, the art world. And, um, we find that now we have to fend for ourselves. And that, that's one of the, I think, major change. And we realize that we can now no longer depend on the international to support what we do. And uh, in the last couple of years, we, after the collapse of San Art in 2006, uh, financially, um, we, uh, 2016, when we collapsed, uh, in the last three years I came back to San Art and sort of rebuilt it again. And really what we are focusing now on cultivating relationship with uh, local uh, business and possible funders 
as well as um, um, collectors who we can provide support. And so basically, we're trying to provide services for the local community in order to earn uh, money to keep uh, running our program. That's, I think, one of the, 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 the changes, the major changes of San Art in the lab. We are now 13 years old now. Yeah, I mean, you started Santa in 2007 in Ho Chi Minh City, and the I, and you used and you actually at the same time also established something called the Vietnamese, sorry, the Vietnam Foundation for the Arts in Los Angeles. And as you were saying, this was the way in which you built, um, developed funds in which to develop Santa. But what was the motivation for starting Santa in 2007, vis-a-vis? -vis? him. <laughs> yes, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because um, yeah. the year, two years before yeah. that, um, the Ford Foundation found that uh, in southern Vietnam, particularly Saigon, yeah. there were no uh, contemporary art activities yeah. because most of the activity were in the north. Uh, in Hanoi, yeah. that's where all the embassies, mm -hmm. and so that means all the kind of uh, grants and funding come from. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to uh, give funding to a, a local gallerist to do this uh, kind of big international exhibition. Mm. But uh, she doesn't know anything about doing a major <laughs> exhibition. So through many, many yeah. issues and, and so finally she came and asked for my help. So. I, the first thing I thought was to uh, invite somebody who, from the region, who can understand the difficulties working in the region. And so I invite uh, Greg, uh, Jeb, mm -hmm. uh, Gritia Gawiwong, to come in. And Gritia recommend that we bring in record mm -hmm. for the international connection mm -hmm. and she, her regional connection. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a perfect kind of, uh, uh, idea. So we invited the two of them came and they came and they curate the 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 exhibition for uh, no they they have actually bigger plan than just one exhibition. They have mm -hmm. uh, the I w uh, they proposed that a three exhibition that span the three years rather than one years three three chapters. And knowing how busy Rec Red is, mm -hmm. I was quite impressed that he's willing to commit to, to Vietnam for that yeah. long. Um, and so the, the show, we, we did everything we could. Uh, Rec Red and Jeb, we, uh, we rented four museums. Yeah. Uh, the War Remnant Museum, the Southern Women Museum, the uh, Le Thanh Tho Museum, and the Fine Art Museum. And the museum, we came in and we renovate some of the space because mm -hmm. many of them are sort of run-down spaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we set up almost everything. And my doll, the, the, the Vietnamese woman who uh, the Ford Foundation mm -hmm. gave the money to, her job was to get the permission from the government for this exhibition. Uh -huh. Now. The reason, I think one of the reasons why they gave her the money was number one, she's Vietnamese, num she's a local, number two, she's a, a Fine Art Association member, mm -hmm. who, and number three, her father was the general mm -hmm. in the Communist Army, so they thought she could pull strings to get the permissions, but it didn't have, she couldn't get it. So the whole thing was basically censored by the government. Mm -hmm. We had a soft opening, mm -hmm. um, but out of that, uh, but we couldn't open all the, the spaces. But out of that frustration, uh, this, the, the, basically the, the fear and the competition for control of the art scene by the Fine Art Association, because they basically advised the government whether mm -hmm. to give us the permission or not. Mm -hmm. And they for a long time controlled the art scene in Vietnam. But now there's this you know, independent organization is mm -hmm. basically doing that job, but doing a job much better than them. Mm -hmm. So they, I think they didn't want us to get the permission to open the show. So in the end, we couldn't open the show, but 
the frustration of it led me to set up Vietnam Foundation mm -hmm. for Art and eventually built San Art and sort of tried to build a community mm -hmm. of uh, young contemporary artists to get together and support each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. So the project that you're talking about is actually Saigon Open City, right? And, and this was um, a platform that was, correct me if I'm wrong, that was set up almost like a Biennale, but chose not to be a Biennale and take over a city. Okay. Um, Rick, yeah, Rick, Rick, please share with us actually how you got involved and in your role as Saigon Arts. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Kritiya, who then had okay. first invited to curate the show, um, I mean, we, you know, we've been talking about these ideas for a while and I mean, I think there's always a question how necessary it is to make another Biennale, at, even at that point, which is like, I don't know, 20 years ago, <laughs> you know, um, so we said, and also for us, I think, and this is comes back to this idea of the local and the global situation, right? So. I mean, having been to South Africa, first Biennale, mm -hmm. been to Guangzhou, the f I've been to like all the first Biennales around the world, and realized like often that, um, you know, I mean, and I, I think you could see some of the, which ones that are successful are the ones that are basically, has a connection to the place itself, has the connection to the community itself, you know. So in that sense, we said we didn't want to make this other m model, which is like a kind of Western model. We wanted to do our own model and to do it in a kind of over a period of time so that the community itself, so, you know, people in Saigon themselves would first, you know, be the participants of the exhibition or that it would mean something to them before, you know, it means something to somebody in New York, right? So for us, it was about trying to find a way and structure to first integrate the idea of contemporary art into like a place where maybe it's not something people think about, you know, people are trying to survive and, and, and have their next meal. So we created this kind of like a longer stretch of time and in, and in a way to introduce also like the idea of contemporary art or even art that already existed in that place itself to like to try to make it under, you know, to try to give the community a sense that this is part of their, you know, daily structure. And um, so that's how we started, in a sense, like kind of going, looking at certain historical things and people and certain artists who came out from the war and, you know, and, uh, and from there drew a line to like even somebody like Martha Rosler or, uh, you know, yeah, Nancy Sparrow, and to like kind of big Western artists that have, in a way, have talked about like the you know problems of the war and have been supporting, in a sense, like the people of Vietnam in their you know fight against the American war. Uh, so you know, so we were like trying to make a kind of whole platform, and. Um, and I, th I still think it's a kind of a viable idea to keep going <laughs> to do it. And maybe it'll be another 30 years before the second one will go out, you know. But uh, yeah, so, uh, but I think it's important to think that uh, we, at least for myself, having been in the West, studied in the West and have big connection that, that we also learn that what not to do. <laughs> You know, like that we have our own climate, we have our own air, we have our own food, and, and we need to like work with what we have and understand that before we like try to, you know, use the other model or something like that. Yeah. Ding, maybe you could also share how this then, how, because this project was envisioned originally to be more than one edition, was that right? And then, so how did this lead to the inspiration with San Art? And how did maybe, yeah. I think um, from what I saw was that this fear of basically the unknown. Uh, the government didn't know what the hell contemporary art was. They see all this work, that particularly work that brought back that of artists from the 60s and the 70s who making work anti the Vietnam War. And they see how political it is. And I think that's part of it scare them. 
and part of it they just didn't understand some of the work and so this whole new thing for them it created this this fear for them and so I think one of the things that I decided to do was to create uh, particularly sand art was to engage with them and that means in Vietnam every exhibition you when you do you uh, when you do an exhibition you have to apply for permission uh, to open the show and so I thought that if we open the gallery and we d we're not going underground but we just do it openly and engage with them every month and a half uh, in order dealing with to get permission and to bring in people to, to talk about contemporary art so I can educate not only the community but all those of these um, people in the Ministry of Culture to, for them to understand and that, that was the, 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 the Rick, idea, is just to keep engaged with them every month. Mm -hmm. So, Rick Ritt and Ding, thank you for sharing that. So it seems like what Saigon Open City was, was almost a beginning, a platform that, brought, that was a global platform, pretty much, um, within Saigon, and it, was a, and it created an opportunity to grow much more, something much more long-term. Um, before we move on to a question for Ade, in which this has a lot of resonance with what Ade is doing with Wrong Rupa, with Documenta, but also with Good School, um, Rikrit, you said something, that this would be something that is a project that still continues to have value, even though this is something that happened in 2007. What, what perhaps would be different if you were to do Saigon Open City today, or this year, or next year? You know, like, because 2007, and and 2020 is quite a different framework, both for Vietnam and Thailand and these types of collaborations. Um, I still think that the model that we had is still interesting to work because the idea was first to like talk about contextualizing history and local history. And then the second part was a kind of workshop. Mm -hmm. So we were going to invite artists, local and you know, foreign or whatever, to come and do workshops with the community. And that, the idea was to work with different communities, so from children to old people, you know, from, yeah, workers to soldiers. So the idea would bring artists in, that would be the second part, and the last part would be a kind of more, a larger formatted exhibition, which hopefully by then would have, you know, the interest of everyone. So I think, I still think that still works. I mean, the Bangkok, Art Biennale, which is, you know, about to happen again, you know, is kind of like, I mean, for me, it's still, you know, like people go to look for it, but half of the people don't really know what they I mean, they don't even know it exists, right? So, in a way, it's kind of playing like, you know, it's still like using the old trope of like the Biennale, which is to like bring artists with some names and interesting things and then put them into space, but then without any kind of real educational groundwork, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think it means anything to the community, and maybe it might be nice objects that they like do their selfies in front of, but I don't think that that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to really try to create a kind of, yeah, in a way to like first involve the local community. Um, and, um, yeah, so I don't, I think it, it and that, that's always for me like the first groundwork like in terms of like how, even in terms of how I would do my own work, mm -hmm. you know, I would have to understand the context that I'm in, I would have to basically spend some time mm -hmm. with it before I actually start to even think about what I would want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think it's, uh, it's always important to work with what, what, you know, within the place. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I yeah. agree with Rick. Yeah. And I think the second chapter, in terms of the workshop, the, uh, it's really important uh, because even today, you know, after now 15 years now, more than, uh, the contemporary art is still something very foreign to mm -hmm. the local Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of work that need to educational mm -hmm. work that need to be done, mm -hmm. and I think San Art. We I feel that in the last 
13 years that we've been operating mm -hmm. is primarily have been educating artists. Mm -hmm. And we have really, we barely touch do educating the community about what is contemporary art. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ding and Rikrit. Uh, I mean, I think what you definitely are pointing to is that this divide between the global and local, whether it's infrastructure, is also tied to education and what, what, one, um, what one knows about a local context, but also how much that local context is receptive to actually have an exchange. Um, this actually has a lot of resonance with two projects, Ade, that you are directly involved with. There's the good school, um, which Rong Rupa, if you could tell us a little bit about that, but also how, how does the work that Rong Rupa is doing with the good school, how is that perhaps different from the work that Rong Rupa is doing with Documenta? Which is hugely different, but here we are, we started with a story of, uh, of a Biennale, a want-to-be Biennale that was a global platform that then ended up feeding into the local infrastructure. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe I just want to a bit comment on on the global local because I think uh, uh, I just I, I just I just want to see it as as more because we I don't know maybe at least for me like, like <laughs> or maybe uh, the trap is like like thinking like local is actually yeah. like small and global yeah. is actually big yeah. right uh, <clears throat> but I think uh, 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 I think maybe, maybe maybe we can see it also as as a more like conversation. Like for example, I think uh, I think in, in the region, like Southeast Asia, it's it's been uh, it's been actually exchanging a lot <coughs> in even like like centuries ago, you know. Like, uh, uh, but I think uh, uh, suddenly we sort of like cornered and then also divided, and and then and then start to think as we are is actually small rather than rather than actually we actually connecting it. Uh, like for example, like the uh, I think what what Ruang Rupa do or did, for example, uh, it's it's been a while. It's like 20 years now, like this year. So first of April is our 20 years. So okay. it's the longest uh, April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a. Uh, I, I I would say that this actually is not not nothing new. It's it's actually evolution. You know, like I can. I can easily, or we can actually easily connecting it to, to the history of, of, uh, of our artist group uh, history or tradition. Like we can go back to Prasagi in, uh, in, in uh, 1930s, for example, and, in, and also on and on and on, uh, like almost like every decade, there's always something. <coughs> uh, so we somehow, uh, Sort of, uh, hopefully, it's not the last who sort of like turn it into more, so, more, or so sophisticate uh, the model into into institutional practice. While while the, the the previous generation is like into more like momentum, like eventual or reactional. Uh, that's why it's always like sort of like a movement. But like the. Uh, we are of course like really inspired by a lot by by the one uh, our predecessor like like even like Chimati for example how the <coughs> uh, Ch uh, Chimati uh, uh, investment in in uh, in uh, uh, investing uh, energy time space into for the young artists for example or something like a new way of uh, producing art for example which is which is really super inspiring and 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 we we i think after 98 or 2000 and on it's usually super different uh, because uh, most of the collective or initiative and in, uh, at least what i see in indonesia uh, is really have this institutional uh, notion more uh, uh, we or there like like really thinking on like how to sustain, how to survive, programming, uh, uh, really, really as institution, somehow. Uh, there's a lot of this uh, illusion, of course, <laughs> back and forth. And like we, we, we are thinking that like what is actually best, uh, what is, what is actually the illusion of what what is ideal. Uh, we don't really have like museum 
infrastructure. We don't like really have sort of like copied of, I mean, we're always trying to, to copy that, right? Like, like the, the structure of how the Western infrastructure, you know, museums, galleries, whatever, you know, even Biennial right right now <laughs> but uh, uh but these things is actually something that is really uh really different uh, uh it's really interesting how this illusion it's 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 being adapted and then also played and also become like something else which is uh, like a really super different model i think i think in, in in the region i think we should we should pay more attention on that practice because it's somehow for me at least it's more interesting <clears throat> Oh, while, of course, uh, uh, a lot of states is actually trying to copy that, while in the, in the same time in the West it's actually start to start to falling down and then start to escape from that because uh, they know it's actually maybe it doesn't really work. Even even contemporary art, you know, like like because it's 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 it stays in building up a. a, a, a a wall rather than a bridge, for example. You know, like museum is actually working on that uh, a lot now. You know, like like re rethinking about that relation between between the arts or the institution and, and the public, for example. While we actually have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of, I would say, a lot of models that is actually uh, based on. Uh, grassroots and really a uh, community based uh, model which is uh, it might not possible to copy but i think it's really interesting to 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 studying it and then also maybe reinvent in in in, in some other places or maybe also scales maybe it's, maybe it's not maybe it's not it's not big. It shouldn't be big. It shouldn't be. It, it should be like small and medium, for example, because when it, when it's big and then and then it lost, it grips. <laughs> it lost the 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 original ideas, for example. So these these things, I think, uh, uh, which somehow in 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 the region, I would say, or maybe I would say in, in Indonesia, for example, it it didn't really captured by <coughs> i would say it's actually will be more uh progressive if it's also captured by the academic by the institution by the even by the state for example so uh, this way also we we we, we come up with uh, with uh, with good school for example as as a collective studies because because it's actually have a lot of uh, rooted uh, uh, practice uh, uh, in Indonesia or maybe in the region, but it's actually none of the none of the uh, education institution or art school, for example, it's really paying attention on that uh, either historically and also practic uh, in in practice. So, so we think that we should build that more. Uh, playing with informality and also formality, working on that more organically. <coughs> we call it uh, we call it the collective studies that really working on on that notion of how is actually collective practice can can also be something that really uh, uh, a practice that is actually very important in in, in our soil. Uh, if if we see the art school now, at least if I see it in Indonesia, it's, it's, it's the most conservative one. <laughs> I think we can always complain about our art school in every country. Uh, like our art school is actually, if we go back to our art school, I was studying in Yogyakarta for five years. If I go back to, to, to our art school, uh, my art school in... <coughs> In Jogja, for example, I will I will see something pretty much the same. So it's really amazing how art school, for example, I think in the region, art school is actually the most conservative institution, and and this is that's that's why also it's really a, a, a big homework. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it should be it should be shut it down, but <laughs> or <laughs> or close it down. But I think to think that. That's only that way to make an artwork. 
or the art practice is actually only categorized by that, uh, uh, like very simplified uh, uh, category, I, th I think it's really a problem. I think it should be more diverse. And in this region, it's actually super diverse, and we didn't see it. We didn't, it didn't reflect uh, <coughs> in our uh, art education uh, system, for example, even in the practice. I mean, we, be, we are, of course, it's, 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 it's great that we are busy with, uh, with building up museum, with uh, building up Biennale, with building up art fair, but, you know, it's, it's these three things, or like maybe art school, <laughs> this, <laughs> sorry, I, I will blame it to this four. <laughs> But this is, this is really a problematic because, because we actually have much more, much, much more diverse practice which is actually couldn't or didn't reflect uh, in this, these three or four formats or models. I think we need much, much more uh, models. Um, thank you, Ade. I, I think you've, you've said something that, that will root this conversation quite well, which is that this thing about the global and the local being a bit of more a conversation and one in which um, the local context utilizes maybe the global or the global can sort of push against sort of let's say conservative art school programs because you develop other programs like a biennale that opens up those frameworks for learning that maybe the conservative school doesn't allow or when we talk about Saigon Open City. Um, and what was interesting is that Ding earlier had brought up that a lot of international funding is part of this ecology as well and that this international funding becomes a way of looking in and looking out of, of these sort of spaces. Um, Ding, if you could share a little bit, there was something that you said earlier that, and this is something that I think applies to all the scenes that we're talking about, the Indonesian scene. And sorry, we'll get back to Documenta after that because that's such a major thing, but I think you've, you've, taught, you've touched on something that I think is important when we talk about global ecologies and local infrastructure is the desire to actually build up art schools, education programs, and that the global becomes a way of not just providing whatever the global may be, right? Because it's a, that, that definition of what the global is changes constantly, especially if we talk about the decline of the West or Western institutions. But Ding, you did say that in 2016, San Art um, was, went through a period of being shut down, and this was directly related to sort of this interchange between the international and the local because of the way that funding structures are structured. Could you share a little bit about that? Well, well, basically you were saying that um, earlier that you mentioned very, that some of the funding for San Art came from international um, sources and that international sources have specific scales of funding and specific programs and agendas of funding and sometimes they don't match with the local. Um, okay. In 2013, uh, we got major funding from the Prince Klaus Fund, uh, which is a dream fund that I think all, almost any organization want to have. Uh, it's the three year, uh, six years um, partnership program, that's what they call. Uh, first three years, uh, you get something like over 100,000 uh, <laughs> a year for funding for three years. And then the next three years, uh, you just still partner, but you don't get any funding. Uh, and you work with them to develop a program that uh, to spend this money. And you have to understand before this, our annual budget is around $50,000. And certainly we have um, over $100,000. And on top of some of the money we earn different ways. So. It was quite an amazing um, windfall for us. But the program that they want was on a different level than what the community needs. Um, the program that was developed was called Conscious Reality, which brought in a series of really amazing speakers from mostly from the global south. Uh, talk about a variety of issues. And uh, the problem was there was interest. The first lecture that we, when we announced, uh, we booked a small theater that's over 350 seats 
and it was completely sold out. I w I w it was free, but everybody booked it, and we have to pipe the lecture out into the hallway through a monitor. And we thought that's wonderful. This what the community need, and we sort of hit the spot. But the problem was the lecture was on a level that was too complicated for our community. Basically, our community need the basic first before we can they can go to that level, and we weren't providing that. And over the course of the next three years, um, they barely grasped one idea, and we brought in another subject, another lecture to talk about another subject. And gradually, we realized that nobody is getting anything out of this. And uh, by the end of that three years, the number of attendance to something like 30 people, from 350 to 30. And um, but that that was the problem. The funder demands certain level, and the local require something else. And this is where they don't understand. We don't understand each other. And uh, so I, I always felt really kind of bad that we spent so much money. And that money could do something so much good for the community, and we missed the boat on that one. Yeah. So. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the reason why I asked about this is we're talking about the global and the local as there's a type of dissonance where sometimes these two levels and two systems don't talk to each other. But that's not to say that, as Adi put, that it's really a conversation, right? Because sometimes you can create something out of it as when, when um, Saigon Open City led to San Art. But if, if we could just talk about maybe one more case study. Rikrit, you have contributed a lot to the Thai art scene in specific Thai artist communities throughout the last 30 years. You've been in, involved with the establishment of the Land Foundation. You've been involved with Gallery Verve. And, and the way in which your studio is sometimes talked about in relation to supporting younger artists. Um, you know, what are the opportunities? We talk about the dissonance. But what are the opportunities that the global, global, right? And Ade has very correctly um, clarified that this is really a conversation and also an imaginary, right? And global, sometimes we think about Western institutions, the international art world. How, um, how, how have you thought about the, your investments in the Thai local art scene in these different ways in relation to the global? Has it been a useful tool? Is it a question of dissonance? How, how is this relationships kind of fleshed out? Um. Well, I mean, so when I first started to come back to Thailand, you know, more often and in a way settled down there, um, I was giving talks at the art school because friends would invite me to come and give a talk. And then through those talks, I met some students who were going, well, and this is Silapakon, which is like the central bureaucratic, you know, art school of Thailand. Um, so I met some young people there and they were kind of amongst themselves discussing like how they were going to continue to be artists after finishing school, you know, after graduating from school, how were they going to find a way to make whatever they were making to survive and yet still stay as close as they can to their, you know, art practice. And so with this, this group discussion, I start to say, okay, well, you know, what do you want to do? What is it? What's the vision that you have that you think? So they were talking about like advertising. They wanted to develop some kind of uh, artistic group who would enter into like really into the commercial world to survive, but at the same time funding that back to make their own work, you know? So it was a kind of realistic model. And so I said to them, okay, let's start a magazine because this is where you can do your advertising you can you know bring those and then at the same time you can make your interest in terms of the art and and your own work so we started a magazine we started an office we started a magazine and uh, we published maybe four or five different issues um, 
And you know, I'm I, I'm very bad at asking people for money. I don't want to ask anyone for money. I don't even want to ask collectors to buy my work. But anyway, I found a way to like just self-fund. You know, so so everything that I've involved with is t generally self-funded, except maybe the Land Foundation. Maybe in the past five years, we actually raised money because we had a friend who could do that for us. And um, but otherwise, I really feel like I was saying to Din like. It's like Robin Hood. I just rob those guys who have money, who wants to buy art, and then I would put it to, you know, to other use, right? So it's really how you channel the money, and that's that's really how the Land Foundation has survived in a way. I mean, we we and and our our situation is like when we have initiative, when we have ideas, when we have reasons to do it, we do it. And then we we don't we don't you know we just let the grass grow, and not worry about, you know, there's no expectation and so whatever we can we we do it you know, and then on the other model I would say, from that magazine you know slowly the young people start to say well we're making art but we don't have any place to show, and our art is not you know it's kind of conceptual and it's not you know, we're the the few galleries that there exist in Bangkok is not really giving us the opportunity. So I said, okay, then let's use one wall of this office space and each person bring a work, one work, put it up and we'll have an exhibition. But you have to bring the best work and then you have to stand in front of everyone and explain why you're showing this. You know, So it's about like actually building a kind of dialogue. And of course within do doing that, I have friends who come to visit, you know, and so they also start to have dialogues with, with them, which is like, you know, another voice. But I think what I found really uh, important for us in Thailand, and this is like in Chiang Mai as well as in Bangkok, is that the young people needed a space to be critical, mm. right? They needed to be critical of other ideas. They need to be critical of the elder. They need to be critical of the system, and they were not able to do that through the education. So this is why art school is bad, let's say, in Thailand, because, you know, if they studied with this professor, they become the clone of the professor rather than a critic of the professor, you know? And, and so then you just have mod, you know, just have the same thing in different generation. So the land, in a way, was uh, a kind of space where these young people could come and actually say what they think and discuss what they're thinking and able to from that develop their own you know ideas and feel that what they are critical of which then feeds their own practice you know is is uh, viable in that sense um, and then on the other hand from this little wall that people were showing we started to then fold the magazine because it was really you know difficult to to like continue to 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 kind of publish that and then we just started to make an exhibition space and that exhibition space has kind of evolved from this one wall to like uh, different spaces to what it is now today maybe like we're five years in this new space and at this point it has become even self-sustaining in the sense that it has been around long enough that some of the younger artists that has shown there has gone on to like become you know noticeable even outside of thailand and and in that sense um i always call it it's like artists run space for profit because like all the non-profits <laughs> closed down because uh people were like you're non-profit so you don't need any money we said we're actually for profit, we need money to keep the next show going, to give money to the next artist to make their work. So, uh, you know, it has to be, and then I would say like that there, between the land, which is a very different project with a very different idea and model to the gallery, they're like running parallel in two different systems. Um, but I think both, both are viable and both has, you know, it's a kind of platform that has a space that somehow is now it's kind of able to sustain itself but it's about like not having expectations or not trying to be yeah not trying to be in the picture that somebody else is projecting of you so it's always i mean 
So for me, it's always important that we just say, well, we can do this, we're doing this, and if everyone's in on it, we do it. You know, if no one's in on it, we don't do anything. So that's kind of... Uh, Thank you. It definitely seems from what the three of you say, it's so much of it is based within the local community and the agreement and the needs of that. Um, you know, we were talking, I mean, th this is a panel about global ecologies also, and we are all, so the Southeast Asian art scene and conversations that the three of us have had has grown considerably. I mean, there are some examples 15 years ago, we, within the scene, we didn't see each other as much. Um, and as well, with Wrong Rupar actually taking on the curatorship for Documenta, it's almost in some ways put Southeast Asia on a map because there's suddenly this, this interest, right, in this developing scene. Not to mention that there's actually been a substantial economic growth. Um, and so there is a sense of young artists becoming more aware of the international. And I wonder, um, may, maybe unevenly across Southeast Asia, but I'm wondering how this has changed perhaps the three of the projects that you have spoken about. Um, is this leading to new models of leadership, for example, or what, how, how is this maybe changing how things, um, when you first started these projects, whether it's when Rung Bra was first working, or when you were first starting with the Land Foundation, or when you started with Gallery Earth, how has this shifted? Uh, during the yeah yeah so how has it shifted now has this changed the game a bit between that relationship because there's now an imaginary or a professionalism goal in some senses uh, I mean we, we started like super small I mean like uh, even our name is Ruang Rupa we start like Ruang is space actually but we started without space actually <laughs> so just like nomadic uh, but then uh, uh, we manage to rent some space and uh, to work and also to live there. And then uh, we never really, really imagined that it can be like this uh, big in a sense that we can have a lot of friends and work with a lot of people, uh, hundreds of people maybe now. Uh, and we work also with a lot of collectives. <clears throat> like so it's 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 really spiral out like really from from small uh uh friendship and then and then it's and then spiral out uh more broader and during i think started in 2000 around 2002 or 3 uh we were uh, in connection with uh, with south south uh connection during uh, the ray network and then afterwards, with art collaborative, I think it it it, it taught us a lot as well uh, to have like more broader uh, conversation. Uh, but in terms of not only artistic but also organization-wise, we we struggle. It's it's really up and down. I mean, like if maybe when when uh, when people see Ruang Rupa, maybe people see Ruang Rupa like like just like the right now. But actually, it's like really a long sort of up and down, really a lot of struggles. Uh, uh, I still remember <laughs> when, we s when we start, when we first time we decide, let's have salary. Like trying to respect our labor uh, with all the risk, because we know when we start to do that, and then it's, it is actually sort of like a next stage that we cannot it, it's, it, it will go uh, beyond or even more than that. Uh, I never really, really say this in public, actually. <laughs> but, uh, it was actually started in 2002, I think, when we had this money from uh, Guangzhou Binal. Uh, we were <laughs> uh, we involved in Guangzhou Binal, and then, and, then, and then they have this... Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember what award, but then we, we we got this award, and then as far as I know, as far as, as I remember, it was like maybe around like eight thousand dollar, and then and then we thought like, wow, this is a lot of money, <laughs> like, and then let's let's have salary for ourselves, <laughs> and then and then it's of course it's below <laughs> below the 
how I call it, the, uh, the, 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 the standard of uh, Jakarta salary. <laughs> Uh, but and then we 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 go that. Uh, but and then and we start to work like that. You know, like we we, we involve more people. Uh, we give them like small fees, <laughs> very very underpaid, of course. Like most of us, uh, maybe until now. Uh, <laughs> it's I, I think it's really global. It's really global uh, uh, problems, right? Uh, art and culture is always uh, mostly underpaid. Uh, uh, but we have space, we have friendship, we have networks, so they can have maybe not maybe not big profits, but a lot of benefits. So it's like so the so the community itself sort of like uh, hold this sort of uh, uh, security. So Ruang Rupa is actually never never maybe even for me, <laughs> it's never really really the one. Like Ruang Rupa is actually just like one of the, even even for me or like for others. Uh, that's why also it it can uh, it just like it just like I am practicing answering this question like how because this always answers like how you can deal with the same people for <laughs> twenty. I mean some friends is actually I know each other from we know each other from our school like we know each other from twenty five years now. Is worse than family, <laughs> so it's a uh, it's uh, uh, maybe maybe also because of that because it's not the only one. So it's like we have a lot of channels. We have a lot of channels of uh, expression, and one of the big chunk of our life is actually ruang rupa, or like big part of our expression or imagination is actually ruang rupa. So so that's also how it works for everyone. Maybe. Maybe we should do that for art as well, <laughs> not the hundred percent. So, but uh, I think in two thousand, uh, I remember. Uh, so we have talking about sustainability, for example. This is also part of the the, the changes. I would say uh, we have the support. Usually, <coughs> uh, so we so we have usually for uh, three resources. Like like one is actually from our our uh, money itself, so we, 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 we save, we work something else and then, and then like, because we work something else also like, like designings, some architecture, some, uh, 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 some playing music, producing, managing, organizing a festival, that kind of stuff. So, so we put our money into the, into Ruang Rupas, like small part, and, and, and the rest is actually from, <coughs> of, Funding, which is uh, 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 sometimes sponsors, eventually uh, some uh, from government sometimes, and also from uh, foreign funders, which is also up and down. But I remember in 2011, I think, or 12, that's when we got uh, we got money every year from HIFOS from from Holland, and that's actually for the. F we know that they're going to. Because after many years, they're going to leave the uh, 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 the funding, right? The support. So we actually asked them uh, to propose that we use the last two years of their support is actually not to support the program, but to support in how we can actually speculate and experimenting how to sustain or to find the model how to sustain it so so and then they they uh, because because we said that because we <coughs> because there's a lot of experience also from from the ngos in indonesia after 98 you know like a lot of money after 10 years the money left and then it's just dead uh, it's same also with, with a lot of uh, uh, countries. This fully 100% depend on uh, uh, some power, either state or or, uh, or fundings or sponsors. So we, we, we try to think like how this uh, so, uh, should not happen. So we experiment that uh, experiment on that, uh, and finally we found sort of like uh, three things that we actually maybe you can see the image of the. No, it doesn't work. 
So there is a three things. Uh, uh, one is actually the finan financial sustainability, the artistic, and also the knowledge part. So these three things sort of like uh, we put all these three resources in one uh, lumbung or one pot, and then we we manage uh, together. And then we slowly working with. Uh, we work a lot already many, many years with, with other collectives, but then, then in 2015, we think that we should also taking care of each other. We don't want to be just like erecting alone like penis. We just like we have to dissolve and, and also working with others <coughs> uh, uh, collective because we know that this is, this is the same problem everywhere. So that's why we, we, we come up with uh, this uh, so-called ecosystem and then we work together now collectives with collectives with uh, two or three others uh, collectives and then now we are like maybe like 70 people and uh, work together, manage together, find the money together, uh, collaborating in, in program and ideas and everything and also in space-wise. Uh, with a, some something in the middle is actually education uh, platform to 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 harvest all the knowledge. So talking about the shift, it's actually we are slowly really becoming sort of like a collective and collectives. That's one thing, and also the the, the second uh, we are thinking on sustainability more. Uh, Seriously, not only financially, but also uh, ideas. That's, that's why we are thinking on uh, the education or regenerational knowledge, because that's exactly like Richard said. That's the only thing that we think that model that we can criticize ourselves, we can question ourselves in this model, because otherwise it just becomes sort of like too stiff and then it's really easy to break as well uh, become something that we long time ago also hate <laughs> so this is uh, we, we we try to sort of like uh, uh, put a lot of questions also with uh, with the new people with the new partners and also with this education uh, platform we can we can we can do that uh, re really in in daily basis actually I mean, so maybe to recap, the question was, um, thank you so much, Adi. The question was really, you know, this we, we've been talking about how the global ecology and the local infrastructures relate to each other and how important it is. Um, the three of you have emphasized actually in addressing local needs, but also the growing local community, whether it's discourse, whether, and we've also talked fundamentally that really what this conversation is about is sustainability. And what are the tools of that you have at your at your disposal? Whether it is within the international art world and whether it's within the local scene, we've spoken about funding and so forth. So the question was, um, how is this how has this dynamic changed? Because we've talked about projects from 2007. We've talked about projects that have just been launched within the last two years, um, and we've also seen in the last couple of years the growth of Southeast Asia. You know the changing of certain financial statuses, which then change to whether you can get NGO money, for example. So, and also we've seen a growth of a greater awareness of um, young art students becoming aware of the international and sort of like the glorification of specific Southeast Asian artists and setting these types of goals. So how has that actually changed these kinds of projects and the way that you engage with and invest in these art scenes was the question. So like the international has changed, the global has changed, you know, and uh, so how does this change the way you engage with the, with the local? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that, say, when we started, mm -hmm. when Kamin Lechapa said, and I started the land, and actually there were other, you know, Mit Jain, mm -hmm. there's a, a whole group of older artists involved, um, you know, we... I mean, the thing was to generate a kind of space, mm -hmm. but then at the same time to then generate energy for the younger generation to be developing, right? And so, I mean, and that's for me always the important thing is like we try very much to like then empower them so that they would take over. So it's like creating a platform mm -hmm. and then, but then trying not to hold on to, I mean, at least I wouldn't want to hold on to being, you know, 
so I can do certain things, I can advise, I can rob money from the rich and give it, you know. <laughs> but that would just be, so the main purpose for us is always to like raise, you know, the younger generation up and they have to, and then when they k get up, at some point they also continue to go on because they then become recognized and they have other commitments and things like that. So, but the thing is always to kind of keep that space that would regenerate, you know, always the younger people. Um, and, and I think that is always, in a way, that's like part of being sustainable is to mm -hmm. always hand, you know, the, I mean, I, I don't want to give it like, a, yeah, to give the power to the other, you know. It's not, I mean, I don't think about it in that way, but let's say the energy to kind of, mm -hmm. and then to be supportive of that, which is to say, okay, you know, like I do what I can or any of us do what we can to like, support their ideas and to give them the opportunity to actually grow right and bring those ideas to fruition so I find I think that's very important in terms of like how the land operates um, in terms of the space in Bangkok which is like I say it's a it's you know it's model of like a kind of Western idea of like uh, space com commerce and you know but on the other hand, it's, uh, from, from, for our interest, it's also about representation, which uh, doesn't really seem to exist. I mean, starting to, you start to see a bit more, but to, to make a representation for the artists, like there isn't like, what I'm interested in is to say, you know, we, t we support to make the work, but then also to support to keep the information and then to disseminate the information. You know, so that when people come to look, not at the show, but to look at the archive, that they see that, oh, there's this artist, this artist, and, and, and you know, which is something we need to always consistently do, which is not necessarily something like uh, commercial spaces think that way. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think for me, it's about like trying to create a, yeah, a kind of representation which then sustains the artist to continue on, you know, and, and give that information out, mm. um, which is actually not so easy. Yeah. Uh, so it requires you know, money mm. and manpower. And so it's a very different structure mm. in terms of how. But um, I would say that in a way, you know, there are people looking and people searching, people wanting to know. Um, there are a number of people who may even collect the work, but you know the main thing is that there is information both for the artists and also for the younger people who are like interested in you know learning i mean i'm always asked like when I go and talk give a talk in 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 the Thai context like uh so how do you how I, how do you become international mm -hmm. yeah. and uh how do you how are you Thai <laughs> you know and I, and I would just say, just be yourself, right? You just gotta be yourself, be, you know, and uh, sustain yourself and things like that. So it's not, it's not like that there is a thing out there, you know, it's a thing inside. And, uh, and I say that to New York students too. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, but you know, I mean, I think for me, it's very important that each person sustains mm -hmm. their structure and with that idea that they support each other, that's the only way to kind of, mm. you know. I mean, I don't even think about these yeah. donors, money, yeah. sponsorship, because it's just too much work. Mm. Fair enough. I, I, I want to follow up with, on, with you on the idea of passing on to the next generation. Uh, I actually found that in some way, I think it's wonderful that they, they don't want it they don't want what we pass on because mm. the burden of the history of that <laughs> particular project and also they want something new they want to create their own uh, which is I think is wonderful and so this is one of the questions I'm asking myself it's like when is it the right time to fall and let the new generation start their own thing and this is something I'm struggling with right now with San Art um, there's a whole young group of young curators taking over San Art, so it's not time yet. <laughs> but one of these days, they're going to say they want something else. Mm. 
And I think that's something I'm also interested in when I hope that will happen soon because I also want to step back. <laughs> um. yeah. I mean, I think you just have to give it away, you know, just so because that's the only way they will decide, you know, and, and you have to let them know that they don't have to do the same thing you were doing. That's always the thing, right? They, so they have expectation or they think you have expectation and the thing is to always find a way to, um, yeah, not create that, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing, but then you just have to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, thank you, all three of you, for your um, very, actually, very rich and robust comments. Because this, in a sense, we started with the discussion about the global and the local, but increasingly, what we're actually talking about is just sustainability and what it means to hand over actually infrastructure and tools to the next generation. All right, we have about 20 minutes, so we're going to. Um, I still have that question for you, Ade, about Documenta. Have not forgotten. But um, we, we, we're going to take the... Oh, yes, please, please. I just, Go ahead. And I, I mean, and I would say being yeah. three of us sitting here and knowing... The, I mean, it's also important that we connect them to yeah. each other, yeah. all these other people and, you know, and that's also... I mean, and we can do that because we are much more mobile. Uh, so, but in a way to set up a situation where there is a kind of connection and exchange you know, and because that will also build a whole other kind of community, which I think is also important, right? Thank you, Rickard. That's actually really beautiful to think, because here we are talking about nuts and bolts, but actually maybe it just comes down to the community that we form. Um, okay, we have about 20 minutes to take questions. Can I invite questions from the audience if there's any? Oh, um, we have one in the back. We have a... I know they're going to ask. Hello, hi. Um, my name is Ben Hamp. I'm uh, uh, working with the ASEAN Foundation, and um, I have a particular question about um, how do you feel like uh, institutions such as ASEAN can be of more help to organisations such as yourself and in the region at large? Interesting. <laughs> uh. I mean, no, I think for me it's like trying to not be institutionalized, so that's also why we don't go to, to funders and try, you know. Um, I mean, and I think that's also important amongst the artists' discussion, you know, to like stay out of the books in a way. Um, but I, let's say, for me, I mean, having been, you know, let's say, thinking about it, I would say fund, uh, fund the artist who needs to go to, to, you know, Documenta or to any a number of like international exchange things, you know, because I find that, I mean, we have young artists who suddenly are visible and then they are asked to go and participate and, the, and, 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 and these, in, these big exhibitions have no money for them. And I know the Thai government, you know, is not capable of understanding how to support that structure. So uh, I think it's important uh, to, let's say, well, if ASEAN wants to support any kind of idea, then it should, like, put money into kind of cultural support, you know, that would, you know, get any number of the ASEAN people to, like, have a chance to be in their exchange, you know. Um, I have, well, I've worked with you uh, <laughs> before. Um, I found that, well, just ASEAN alone is too political as an organization. And too many people making decisions that have no experience or knowledge about contemporary art and making the decision that involve in very funding or, and that's, it's a really big problem, I think, with ASEAN uh, as a funder. And I don't know how you can get around it, but 
expertise is important, knowledge about the region is important, and somehow you have to make a case with all the players in the ASEAN um, board or, or governments uh, to let them know that that you know it doesn't mean that because they are one country they can make decision for everything because they don't have the expertise to do that and they should pay attention or listen to the experts the people who know the 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 scene uh, that that's happening or what's happening in the scene uh, i mean we are always thinking that <laughs> That support is actually money, but uh, maybe maybe let's put that aside. We put it maybe later, but uh, but maybe we can we can see it also as a resources, right? I mean, I mean, it's as an institution must must be like a lot of resources uh, that can be uh, <coughs> really also exchangeable, uh, but also. Uh, uh, agree. This is, it's, of course, it's, it's of course it's a political uh, uh, entity, which is also is interesting. Like for example, uh, we it's it's really interesting ASEAN, like sort of like divining what's what's Southeast Asia and uh, uh, and also the art scene also divining what is Southeast Asia. I mean, this is I mean in discourse wise, it's also really interesting how that can be in conversation. <coughs> uh, but also one thing that uh really important uh, i think uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that it can be uh done without <coughs> uh without without power without without can 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 we can we think different way can we can we think not as in a power relation it's it's very difficult it's super difficult as we are male but <laughs> in in the male's world let's 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 try to break that for a while <coughs> maybe it's it's going to be very interesting actually like for example we we exercise that i mean like some some uh, uh I think there's a lot of uh, uh, funders uh, which is now also pro progressively thinking how to how to rethink about the f uh, uh, funders and grantees relations because it's it's been a while it's, it's very it's very colonialistic it's very uh, imperialistic as well right it's, it's very transactional <laughs> uh, uh, and and we we know that you know, uh, we ha we have that lot of terms, very bad terms in Indonesia for that, for example. So, for example, what we what we do together with a lot of organization, with a lot of uh, collectives, uh, artists collectives in South South, uh, from Latin America, Africa, and also uh, South Asia in arts collaboratory, for example, we're trying to change that. So, so we we have. It's not easy. Of course, because it's been a while for ages. So it's not only about the funders' mentality, but also the grantees' mentality. Uh, it's it's super super different from every country in every context, because also historically, historically is also different. <clears throat> so I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that it's all the same. It's 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 very problematic both ways. Uh, so so for example, in arts collaboratory, for example, we. We sit together. We try to break that down, as it's like. So there's no funders and grantees. There's no. There's no proposals. There's no report even. So everyone is actually report to the group. For example, this is very technical, but this is what we do. We exercising this for for a few years already in arts collaboratory. Uh, so the proposals. There's no proposals. It's actually how you as organization uh, put it we call it life plan <coughs> how you as organization uh, planning yourself to sustain and also to responsible also to other in the group in the network that one thing and also there is no report so there is no this because this is i mean i think we know we know this language right like proposals 
reports and then <laughs> and then and then money comes in you know th this is very trading transactional uh, uh, really a really a client sort of uh, 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 relation so that that thing it's w w that we're trying to break I mean like like uh, to have that, I think, I think it's, it's going to be like really super interesting exercise, not only for funders, but actually also for grantees, because many countries, many organizations, or maybe many of us, because we don't, we don't have that mentality in that particular way that strong as like what Rikit said, for example, just now, you know, like, I, I don't want to be institutionalized, you know, like I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. You know, to have that, you know, stand out like that, it's, it's, it's not many at all. You know, it's, it's most of institution, big, small, you know, like in many countries, like let's say in, in, in the region, it's, it's actually also really depends on that. Like um, that, that's why, for example, in Indonesia, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. There's a lot of, lot of, this collective or initiative which is actually because we don't we we have that long tradition to not trusting the government <laughs> we are pretty lucky so we tend to we tend to push that away this uh, power or control relation but again it's not in every country so so talking about ASEAN, I think I think uh, agree. Just like listen and then and then just change the relation because uh, because otherwise we're going to trap into the same thing, very colonial, very imperialistic sort of way of seeing this power relation. Maybe we should we should that put that away for a while and then like really like talking as just like <coughs> uh, really clearly seeing what's what's actually what what's needed and then trying to we have like interesting conversation of course there is a so many many conversation will be can be generated actually do we have a do we have another question from the audience we do over there yes Uh, just keeping with the Australian theme of question askers, I'm uh, Ruben Kean from the Queensland Art Gallery and Asia Pacific Triennial. Um, Ade, you mentioned uh, that, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but um, Indonesian collectives started to take on an institutional character around 2008. And I'm wondering what it is about that date in particular, um, and more broadly, that it's roughly contemporaneous, happening at the same time as Foundation of Sanart and uh, other initiatives in Vietnam as well, um, that have a somewhat institutional character. So if there's something about that time frame when it comes to these locations. Uh, <coughs> after 98, yeah. Uh, but, but we have a long tradition on, on that, like self-organized, Community, we, we like to gather, to gather. <laughs> like, uh, but uh, I, I think I think we have a lot of. Uh, uh, I'm not an expert, but uh, but we can we can always check how the Dutch uh, in colonial era, for example, uh, actually deal with uh, with uh, uh, with how Indonesian like to organize and 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 uh, and make something. <laughs> But like, like in the uh, like during Soeharto regime, for example, you know, it's, 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 it, it, it is very controlled. It's very uh, you, you cannot gather like this, for example. It's, it's very it's very controlled. You have to you have to uh, you have to register to to be uh, to become organization to gather in the, in the regular time, for example. So it's it it might also reflect or resonate to, to, to other contexts also in the region. But that, that's for 32 years. Uh, we have that sort of uh, uh, pretty repressive in, in, in how we should express collectively. So after 98, it was just like 
it was just like 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 explosion of of how it's actually people can gather and organize and making communities collective organization and all and uh, we're talking about uh, not only institutionalizing but also the the non formal one is actually huge you know like it's so many virtually also it's huge so it's a uh, it's amazing how how this actually also uh, we can see it as a as a something that the uh, like for example uh, like for example the, the the activism for example you know it's it's uh, i mean art is it's 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 just like small part in the whole changes that maybe art is actually playing n not pretty big <laughs> role in the in the in the changes because because like now for example like the, the, the uh, like the civic notion of like changes is just amazing you know, I think artists nowadays in Indonesia is actually say pretty confused how to really deal with the public expression because they take on a lot of roles already, like really people, you know, virtually and also publicly in the public space. Uh, we we have we have some steps. Uh, 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 Indonesian government have have steps if they wanna if they wanna launch a certain policy, for example, and then they have to do socializing and also uh, public, and 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 after that they have to see how the public reaction. M many regulation is actually maybe you maybe you saw also like last year a few months ago. There's a big uh, uh, students. Uh, uh, demonstration for example riots in many many uh, uh, city for example so these things is actually taking over I, th I think I think artists really should like rethink how uh, it should also <coughs> uh, work with that dynamic <coughs> uh, maybe put, putting some other imagination rather than like like it's totally different with uh, with the uh, during Soharto regime for example because uh, uh, Citizen is not too strong, so imagination is sort of like something that like really can uh, can deal with the languages. But now, like people are really, really taking over the languages and also put that really in front of the super strong <coughs> for the changes. So art or like artistic expression should find like some other ways. <coughs> so I think uh, in in relation with the the institution for example i would say that can be also one of the things for example <coughs> uh, in terms of space in contestation for example because now the contestation is actually not a not a people against first the state anymore which is vertical now it's like very really horizontal how many schools you have surrounding good school how many mosques <laughs> surrounding good schools, how many artistic expression space in, in, in the scale of a uh, small area or small district in Jakarta, for example. And then, and then we start to think that way. Uh, that's why institutional practice or aesthetic, it's, I think, play a really interesting way in that. Because, and then it's not anymore about uh, expressing it's actually more about also dealing with the, the the daily contest with other expression with other because now for example uh, before when you do something in your space you have to deal with the the fear of someone will pick you up <laughs> or, or some police or some military unit will come something like that or something will will censor you, but now it's actually your neighbors. So it's really different contests. Different. That's why institution. I think it's really interesting uh, in terms of the the space uh, uh, contestation. I think with 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 others. Thank you. Do we have another? We have time for one more question from the audience. Do we have? 
One more? No? Okay, in which case, um, thank you all for your very in-depth um, responses. We will, if you don't mind, we'll just end with one last question. We've talked so much about your infrastructural projects, but I thought maybe we can have, if you can give us, um, a qu um, if we end perhaps maybe with a quick comment on each of your respective practices, because you're all also artists. Um, Ade, you left us with uh, quite, um, quite actually a big idea to chew through, which is this idea of spaces of con contestation, and that there is a shift in a sense that the neighbor now becomes the space of the regulatory space rather than, than maybe the state oppression that comes in, which is something we see all around the world, not just um, with sort of much more conservative public spaces, right? Um, so in this relation between the global and the local, how, ha how have these played out in your practices? What kind of opportunities does this, playing with the conversation of the global and the local, whether it's engaging with the Vietnam War and the history of the Vietnam War, or in, in your case, Rick Ritt, with some of your very well-known shows like Who's Afraid of Yellow, Red, and Green that's been shown all around the world but taken a local politic broader. And Ade, if you don't mind actually speaking to Documenta, that would be um, that would be appreciated because Documenta has historically been quite a political space, especially its historical um, resonance coming out of World War II and what does that mean, perhaps for a wrong rupa to engage with this large international platform? Um, would it be okay if who would like to go first? Since this is our last question, I'm not going to air up, not be authoritarian about it. Um, I can't, I'm still thinking. Okay, okay. Ade, do you want to take the, the documenta question? Sorry. Thank you. You know, I like <coughs> the comment is like like it's like I never been to documenta. <laughs> it's nice, no? Uh, I never been to documenta. I never been to Venice even. <coughs> you know. <laughs> I don't go to Hollywood movie. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, it's it's uh, for us. It's actually how uh, uh, back to conversation and also back to the the maybe try to see it like a, a, as a, as a big ecosystem. How how this actually can be into conversation. These two institution, <laughs> the Comenta and Ruang Rupa, right? <laughs> and we. With, with, with all the ideas, all the imagination of ecosystem, both of us. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, what we, <coughs> so what we're thinking is actually how not to be consumed first, not to be consumed by this uh, uh, institution or, or this documenta, but also how to really uh, see it, not only as a resources, but also uh, institution that you can actually uh, collaborate uh, not not only for us but also hopefully for others as well so uh, basically what we try to do is actually institutional practice which is uh, hopefully will go beyond uh, 2022 or go beyond documenta when 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 we have that uh, we don't we don't really see it as a proposal that we sent actually we actually try to re-invite <laughs> or try to invite back documenta as as become as one of our process as well or or, or path because that's the only thing the only makes the only sense that we think it's possible for us because we don't want to be just go there uh, while we have something locally something uh, that we love to do uh, that we think it's beautiful that in itself even it's full of speculation we don't know what's going on after uh, with with good school for example but we, we, we think that it should also uh, something that documenta should think of not only about documenta but also documenta should think also about the whole <laughs> other things uh, happenings so that's the thing actually one uh, so there's uh, going to be like sort of like two streams one is actually one stream that uh, we call it institutional building which is go beyond 
documenta. So, so that's what first thing that we think. This should be, we should do something or we should make something that should not only stop in 2022, but it should be also going forward. So this, what we try to build is actually, one is actually institution with the Lumbung value and with, with the Lumbung method. <coughs> uh, uh, it can be also uh, uh, triggers or connects the other model of Lumbung's uh, uh, resource sharing model in all over the world. But we're trying to co reconnect that as well uh, by this institutional uh, uh, practice. And the other one is actually the translation, how it actually translates into uh, in Castle as a, as, a, as a place, as a local, as another local, actually. How it's actually connect with, uh, with other locals. Uh, so this conversation that we're trying to sort of cap. So it's not going to be big, but it's going to be many. It's going to be units or projects. Mm -hmm. And it's actually what we're trying to do is actually make sure that it's everything, hopefully, in conversation. And uh, as in conversation, it should be also, hopefully, mutual and also equal. That's one thing. Right, that we should also uh, uh, really keep in mind. Mm -hmm. It might super difficult, but we should try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, things that we are thinking now. We, we, we do a lot of uh, project and, and uh, sorry, uh, research on, uh, we're interested in uh, several models. So we, we are interested in models, actually. We're tr interested in uh, uh, structure and practices, which is more into sort of like, uh, uh, thinking as a mechanism rather than as a, as a piece, right? So like uh, we are thinking on uh, alternative education or alternative uh, regenerational knowledge and also uh, art and activism and also uh, sustainability. We are thinking sustainability as in not only financial but also ideas and environmental. So this few things that is actually uh, surround the research right now that we that we do so there is no theme actually there's so there's no center theme that everything around it will react to it so we build the structure protocols uh, mechanism or even ethic rather than rather than uh, uh, a topic or a theme. So uh, hopefully that will sort of like create uh, a lot of uh, connection rather than one center things. Thank you so much, Ade. Ding or Rickrit, just as a closing comment. Um, okay. And from an artist's um, perspective. In, in my personal work, which um, mostly focus on the writing and rewriting mm -hmm. the history yeah. of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think in, in some way I've been lucky because the Vietnam War was such, it was a global for, uh, event. It wasn't just between the Viet, uh, Vietnam and America. Mm -hmm. And so there was that generation who experienced it or who lived part of it, whether through the news or the television in their homes. Um, there, there was a connection to that. So even though I was making very personal and localized work, uh, whether interviewing local uh, participants in the war, but it found an audience, a global audience, because of that, um, because the Vietnam War was just about, wasn't just about in Vietnam. But um, that generation also is getting older and there's a whole new young generation of curators and art at, um, audience now. But I think the, the, with the endless war in the Middle East also kind of brought in a whole new kind of audience who sort of connected to the work as well. So, in, in a way, it hasn't changed 
for me much because somehow there was a a, a connection that uh, was uh, I, it's, it exists in there. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ding. So in a sense, inherently global in that respect. Um, I just want to go home. Okay. <laughs> That's it. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, um, uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, really, to you know, for me, just I mean, it's yeah. it's 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 actually not so easy. Yeah. Weirdly distracted, and so my goal is to just go home, mm -hmm. stay home, eat at home. <laughs> Stay close to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Rickert. All right. Thank you so much for spending this afternoon with us. The next talk, I think, is coming up soon. So if you don't mind um, joining me in an applause for both Ade, Ding, and Rickert, thank you so much. <laughs>